What's up squad? My name is ESO and welcome back to the channel. I am so excited to be bringing you this video guys because in this guide I'm going to be showing you how to get full Daedric armor which is also fully enchanted as well and I'll also be showing you how to get any enchanted Daedric weapon as well. These armor and weapons will also have the most powerful enchantments that you can get on them in the game, even at level 1. And we're going to be doing this without using any smithing or enchanting. This is by far the fastest way in the game to get the super powerful enchanted Daedric armor and weapons. And in theory, you can do this very very early on in the game at any level. So just to prove to you that this can be done, I'm going to restart the game at level 1 just to make a point. So the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to Dragon Reach, which is located within the city of Whiterun, just here on the map. So just make your way into Dragon Reach. And if you haven't already guys, make sure you smash that subscribe button, because you're going to be seeing tons of daily Skyrim videos on my channel. Once you're inside, you must come over to the right, where you will find Farangar, the court wizard. Just ask Farangar what he's selling. My lord, please. It seems this damnable conflict is... Hmm. I had you figured for a mage. I think you'll appreciate this. And if you go to the book section, you'll be able to buy the Soul Trap spell from him. It will cost you about 300 gold, but don't worry because you're going to make tons of money back after you've done this method, guys. In fact, it's probably also one of the fastest ways to make gold in the game. Next though, we must travel from Whiterun, and you've probably already passed this location when you were travelling to Riverwood at the start of the game, but we're going to travel back to the Standing Stones just here on the map. You'll now want to activate the Mage Stone. This will give you an extra 20% experience boost when you're levelling up your magic related skills. You will need this in a moment. Next up, we need to find a wild animal to kill. You can actually just use any body, even if it's a bandit, but I suggest just killing a wild animal because it's easier. There's tons of wildlife to be found around Whiterun, just to the left here on the map. So I suggest just grabbing a bow and sniping one, or chasing it down and spanking it with your fist. Anyway, after you've slain an animal, be it a fox, cow, mud crab, or deer, we can proceed to the next step. Go into your inventory and activate the book that we brought from Farangar to learn the spell. And then just equip the Soul Trap spell. Now all we need to do is cast the Soul Trap spell on the corpse of the animal, or whatever other body you found. This will rapidly level your conjuration skill. However, you'll find that the spell will actually drain your magicka rather quickly, especially at a low level. So just use the wait option to regenerate your magicka instantly. So all you're going to do now is repeatedly cast the spell over and over again on the corpse and just use the in-game wait mechanic in order to regenerate your mana very quickly. This method will only take you about 30 minutes to get from level 1 to 100. Now using this method is actually much faster and cheaper than levelling up your smithing skill all the way to level 90 so you can craft Daedric armour. And then also levelling up your enchanting to level 100 so you can also put enchantments on your weapons too. And you don't need to waste any perks in the conjuration skill tree using this method which makes it really really good, because even if you're a warrior class, you can still use this method to get the Daedric armor early, even if you're not interested in using Conjuration. But once you have reached level 90 Conjuration, you must travel to the far north of the map, to Winterhold. It's just here. If you are indeed level 1 though, you can instead just take the horse and car outside Whiterun to Winterhold. That's obviously going to be a lot faster than walking. Once you arrive at Winterhold, just make your way over to the College of Winterhold, which is just along this stone bridge here. You literally cannot miss it. So head through the gates of the College of Winterhold and turn right. Here you'll find the doorway to the Hall of Continents. We must now find Phineas Gester. He can sometimes prove quite elusive, but you'll usually find him sitting in this chair inside this room here. If he's not there yet, just wait a few hours in game and he'll suddenly appear. So just talk to him and because you have level 90 conjuration skill, you'll have a unique speech option which will give you a quest. What else is there to be learnt about conjuration magic? How quickly you've advanced. 
most impressive. There are spells yet to be learned. Powerful spells that can more closely and more permanently bind creatures to your will. But there are risks. There are always risks. You must summon and command an unbound remora. These spells are difficult, even for one as skilled as I. To even begin to inscribe them, I need something very special. A sigil stone from an oblivion gate. I do not have one in my possession, nor do you, I'm sure. So we require a Daedra to retrieve one for us. You will summon a Dremora, and order it to bring a sigil stone to you. I will then inscribe the spells for you. <laughs> if only that were true. Summoning an unbound Dremora is not like other conjuration spells. It will not simply do your bidding. You must first prove you are in control. Here is the spell you need. Go to the top of the Hall of Attainment. I have prepared a place for you there. Once you've got the quest, just head up this staircase here. This will lead you to the roof. And once we're on the roof, we'll find the summoning platform. So now just equip the spell that you were given in order to summon the Dremora. Now regardless of what you do or say, the Dremora will attack you. So just kill him. I'm obviously doing this at a very low level, and as you can see I'm using a bow and I'm actually kiting the enemy's attacks, or at least avoiding most of the damage here. If you do have any trouble yourself though, I suggest bringing a follower along for the fight. Or you can just use shock magic because Dremora are actually weak to shock spells. Alternatively, you can actually turn down your difficulty to make the fight a little bit easier. Anyway, we're going to have to defeat this Dremora three times until he finally submits. Obviously because he's using this two-handed axe and it's really slow to swing, it's quite easy just to shoot an arrow at him and then step back a little bit out of the range of his swing because he has such a long wind-up time. Anyway, once defeated three times, he will give you a Sigil Stone, an ancient Daedric artifact from an Oblivion Gate. Now we have the Sigil Stone, we can start the next stage of the quest. But before we do, we might as well complete this quest we just started, as it gives you a really rare spell as a reward. So first off, head back to Phineas and give him the Sigil Stone. He will then reward you with the Flame Throw spell for free. There are few places where one can pursue my type of work without fear of persecution. Mine? Oh no, the stone is yours. I simply need to borrow it for a moment. Now, let's see what there is to see. Make sure that you remember to actually ask for the Sigil Stone back in order to complete the quest. I have the knowledge I need, and so you may have your stone back. And also, please, take this. You have done well. You can just activate the tome here to learn the spell, and he'll also now sell you other master level conjuration spells, such as frost, shock, or dead throw spells. Basically what those spells do is conjure a permanent follower, and they're really powerful. 
Oh, After right. getting the sigil stone back, come back here under the staircase and you'll find a hidden trap door. This trap door will lead us to the midden. It's kind of like a secret area under the College of Winterhold. So we're going to follow this path down here and we're going to head right. Then we can drop down into this next room here. Just head down the stairs and through the next corridor. Now just head through the gate on the left. Here you will find the ancient Dwemer Atronaut Forge. This is where we can craft Daedric artifacts using our conjuring skill. Firstly, and most importantly, place the sigil stone on the plinth just here. You will then see that there's an offering box just underneath it. You must now place the correct ingredients to craft Daedric weapons or armor within the offering box. Obviously each piece of armor has a different recipe, so let me go over some of the recipes with you now. Number one, so this recipe is for enchanted Daedric weapons and you can find the best locations to get all the ingredients I'm about to mention for this recipe down below in the description of this video. You're going to need one Daedric heart and make sure when you put this ingredient in the offering box that you don't accidentally eat it because it's quite rare. You'll also need one ebony ingot, one soul gem which has been filled with a greater soul and then lastly, one silver sword. All these things can actually be brought from the court majors, the blacksmiths, and also the alchemist shops. They can also be found for free. And obviously, if you want the location of them all, check out the description of this video. So place these objects inside the offering box and then just pull the lever. You will now conjure a random Daedric weapon from Oblivion. Obviously, you're going to want to save before you do this so that if you get the wrong weapon for your character, you don't waste your valuable ingredients. You can just keep reloading your save until you get the right weapon with an enchantment you like. But please do note that there is sometimes a bug where the Atronach Forge will only summon a Daedric Warhammer or a Battle Axe. So to fix this bug, you can just take off the Sigil Stone and then put it back again and it will work as normal. It's also worth noting that an enchanted Daedric Warhammer is worth over 4,000 gold. So if you sell it, you can fund yourself to buy more ingredients to make even more gold with. It's such a fast and easy way of making tons of gold, guys. But anyway, recipe number two. This recipe will give you a random piece of enchanted armor. This time, you must put the following ingredients into the offering box. One Daedric Heart, one ebony ingot and again one soul gem which has been filled with a greater soul but this time instead of a silver sword you're going to put one void salt in it so put the ingredients in and just pull the handle and you'll get a random piece of enchanted daedric armor obviously this method is a little more annoying as you must randomly get all the pieces of the armor including the boots helmet chest and gauntlets and it also includes the shield as well. But there's an equal chance to get each item, so it shouldn't take you too long. I suggest just saving each time you get a new piece of armor that you like, and that will also save your ingredients. It's also worth noting though, that there's actually a glitch where you can take the ingredients out of the offering box really quickly after pulling the lever, and you'll actually end up conjuring the item without using any of your ingredients. Do take care though, because that glitch used to freeze the Xbox 360. I don't know if it's still an issue on the Xbox One, but you can let me know in the comments below if you try it. It's probably not an issue anymore. So before I tell you about the final recipe, here are a few of the random enchantments I got after the first 10 uses of the forge. So firstly, we have the Daedric Shield with a 70% fire resistance enchantment, making me almost immune to fire dragons and mages. Next up, we have the Daedric Helmet with a 25% reduction to alteration. I would probably sell this one myself or reload and try again because there are much more useful enchantments for my type of build that I'm going for here. Then we also have the Daedric Gauntlets with a plus 25% smithing power enchantment. This enchantment is actually quite rare in Skyrim, so I would probably just disenchant it to learn the enchantment for myself. You can also get enchantments that increase your one-handed damage or two-handed damage, which would probably be more useful to you right now. Then we have the Daedric Boots with a 70% frost resistance enchantment. Now, most things in Skyrim, as you can imagine, because it's a really cold place, do frost damage. 
So these boots are incredibly useful versus most enemies including, including ice dragons. And finally we have the Daedric chest piece with a 60 point increase health enchantment. And this is one of the best enchantments you can get on a chest piece. So that's really useful to us, especially at a low level. And all these enchantments are at maximum leveled power. So that means if you're level 1 for example, or level 60, you still get the same enchantment power levels. As for the weapons, we have the Warhammer of Blizzards, which does 25 points of frost damage to health and stamina, a very solid two-handed weapon, which is also going to stop enemies blocking your attacks. And then we have the one I'll be using, which is the Daedric Sword of the Vampire, a one-handed sword with 25 points absorb health enchantment, which is obviously really helpful. So then, for recipe number 3 and 4, I will be showing you how to conjure an unenchanted piece of Daedric armor or weapon. All you need is the following. One Daedric heart, one Centurion Dynamo Core, and one Black Soul Gem, which can either be empty or filled, it doesn't matter. Now these items are rather rare to come by, but once again you can find some locations on how to get them down in the description below. After you've put these ingredients inside, you must then put either an ebony armor piece or an ebony weapon inside as well. So for example, if you want a Daedric bow, you must put an ebony bow into the offering box and then pull the lever, like this, and that will give you a Daedric bow. And it's the exact same concept if you want a Daedric sword or a Daedric piece of armor. And you can actually follow my guide in the description on how to get both ebony weapons and armor at level 1 so you can use them with this forge. But in my opinion it's much better just to get the enchanted versions because this recipe takes a lot longer to put together than the other two. Guys I'm going to be making tons of daily Skyrim guides so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss them. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram so you can keep up to date with the latest news on what I'm working on. But thanks again for watching guys, please do like the video if you did find it helpful. My name is ESO and I will see you, loyal subscriber, in the next Skyrim video guide. Have a fantastic day and goodbye. Don't forget that you can receive text and or email notifications from my channel every time I release a new video. Underneath the video just hit subscribe and then hit the bell next to it. You will now get notified as soon as I release a new video. Welcome to the ESO squad guys.